While the netcode for Neo PvP is far from stellar, the amount of builds and sheer variety of stuff you can base your PvP game plan on is more than impressive. There are so many interesting setups, and today, I will be walking you through one of those setups. Today we are talking about leaving weapon on the arena, the way it works and what you can do with it. First up, let's talk stats. You'd want to have some spirit and magic. For spirit, invest as much as you need to cover guardian spirit bonuses you want. And for magic, it's just plain dirty, so that you can max out the number of ninjutsu, majutsu, whatever slots you have. You can also get 6 dexterity to carry the quick change scrolls that are pretty useful. Unless you're doing the plunging attack every fucking time. Anyway, in addition to all of that, you can get whatever offensive stats you want. It all depends on the weapon you're going to use. Once you're done with that, you will need to get a proper talisman setup. Get this talisman and this one. Due to the fact that PvP has a bit of different balance than PvE, there's a little trick to getting your living weapon ready whenever you need it. The trick is to use those two talismans and shoot projectiles. Yes, just magic projectiles with any element. Now, I personally prefer to use lightning ones because whenever they apply the debuff, you get a pretty good advantage. The way it works in PvP, you need just a couple of shots with Tally to get living weapon ready. It doesn't matter if your opponent blocks it or not, it's whatever. So basically, to get living weapon going, you have to land a couple of magic shots with both talismans active, which is pretty easy because the netcode is huge pile of garbage and your opponent will be likely teleported into it. Now you have some idea on how to get living weapon going whenever you want, however, there are some tips and tricks that I want to share with you so you can have a better time with it. First one is to carry Carnage Talisman. Due to how living weapon works, the moment you activate it, you don't take any damage. This means that Carnage Talisman gives you a solid damage boost but doesn't alter your defenses since, well, you don't take any damage. This allows you to maximize your DPS in Living Weapon mode, which is pretty cool. Now, if you have ever used Living Weapon on Arena, you'd know that people have a tendency to run away. And by running away, I mean teleport away whenever you use Living Weapon because, well, they just don't want to trade with it. Anyway, I have a solution for that. A scroll that boosts your running speed. The Tiger Sprint Scroll. So whenever you pop the living weapon and see your opponent run away, just use the scroll and chase them down. Simple. The speed boost is so powerful that chances of them outrunning you are extremely low unless, well, they just use the secret teleport tech. Speaking of leaving weapon itself, depending on what weapon you use, you might not even need the scroll. So far I found Axes and Odachi being the worst. Now don't get me wrong, Odachi is one of the better weapons for PvP. Well, I mean, every weapon is good for PvP because Neo is amazing, except for the Axe. Anyway, the point is, Odachi is pretty mediocre for leaving weapon because it is slower weapon and, well, it can't apply the pressure. People will likely just run away from it, and this is when you should just get the boost from the scroll and try to get some profit out of it. The other weapons are a lot better for that. Spears have a really good poke and are almost impossible to escape if you're using the Tiger Scroll. But the best weapon for leaving weapon setup is just regular sword. Very good opener, easy to chase people down. Plus, if they're actually running away, you get a chance to do a ton of damage due to the backstab damage passive. Now, when it comes to guardian spirits, it is really up to you and it depends on what weapon you're running. Some of you not know, but pressing triangle and circle at the same time triggers the guardian spirit attack if you are in the living weapon mode. Some spirits have pretty useful openings that offer knockdown and whatnot. Play around it, see what you like and go for it. Other than that, each spirit offers different time bonus and might modify it. The higher it's might modifier is the more damage you can take while in the living weapon mode. So yeah, find one that suits your playstyle and just have fun. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.